Welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell-Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're having a great week so far. So I have a question for you all. How important is travel in your life? Do you aspire to travel? Are you one of those people that says, I'm going to take more trips this year? Um, and then you never really take those trips, right? Or life gets overwhelming and then you cancel or you reschedule the trip. Um, I am raising my hand. Um, you can't see me, you can hear me, but just know I'm raising my hand because I'm definitely one of those people that I always say that I'm going to get to take all these trips this year. I'm going to do all these things. And then work gets in the way, life gets in the way, and then I don't end up doing it. Um, are you also someone that maybe says, I want to travel more, but I don't have anyone to travel with and I don't want to really go on my own. So if you said yes to any of those questions, um, then you're really going to enjoy the conversation that I have planned today with uh, my guest, Megan Grant, who is the founder and lead memory creator at Cherish Tours. Megan founded a love for travel at the age of six months, and she's been exploring the world ever since. She truly believes that travel has the power of being transformative. Megan's hope is that by creating transformational travel experiences for women, there will be more genuine joy throughout their lives. It's her belief that if women focus on what truly brings them joy, there will be a ripple effect of compassion, intention, and understanding that will make a direct impact in our world. So stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back with Megan. Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra. All right. I am so excited now to welcome Megan into Glow Up Girl podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you and just to chat to everyone today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get started. Why don't you tell everyone listening or watching who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course. So I'm Megan Grant. I'm the founder and I like to call myself the memory creator for Cherish Tours. Cherish Tours is my company that launched about two years ago. Um, it hosts tours exclusively for women around the world. And all of our tours benefit women in business. And what I mean by that is that when you sign up to travel with us and have this incredible travel experience, you can be confident knowing that your tourism dollars are supporting women's economies around the world through the intentional selections that I make as the memory creator for your travel experience. Awesome. Awesome. I love that so much. Um, Megan, before we dive in a little bit deeper into the tours, um, let's talk about you and your um, entry into the travel world. So you started traveling when you were around six months old. Yeah. And um, can you just talk a little bit about your experience yeah, so it's funny that you mentioned that I started traveling that young because that's definitely, I think, unusual for some people. My parents were travel addicts, my mom especially. So for me, it's a little bit genetic. Um, I, at the same time, was given what I called the roadmap at a young age that a lot of girls in the suburbs grew up with. It's this roadmap that is told telling you exactly what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it and what your life looks like before you've even decided for yourself. And for me, that looks like going to school, getting good grades, getting into college, and then getting that career, finding my husband, and then giving it all up in order to have children and start a family. And while that's a great roadmap to have, it wasn't the one that I had chosen for myself. So I was actively rebelling against it at the same time. And so I was super successful right out of college and started doing conference planning and became the manager of 15 citywide conferences at only 23 years of age. And so I burnt out pretty quickly because my passion was still in travel. I had started traveling young. My first solo travel experience was in a summer camp that I showed up to alone in the Caribbean at age 14. Mm. So I wanted to realign myself back to the 
travel side of things and start falling back in love with my life through travel. And so I didn't know it at the time, but COVID was my exit plan for this career that I had. Mm -hmm. And while COVID totally sucked, was awful, um, it, it gave me that opportunity to tune inwards and take some time for myself in order to realign my career, what I wanted to do, the impact I wanted to make in the world with travel and specifically sustainable and ethical travel so that it supports women and it's not just uh, not caring about the footprints we leave behind. I think the footprints we leave behind matters. Mm -hmm. So I've been to 35 countries so far in my life, and I hope to continue to increase that number and increase that number with really amazing women by my side. Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much for um, sharing. Um, I, I think it's really interesting that you talk about that um, sort of like b- blueprint or framework that yeah. we are given as women. Because as you were saying that, I was like, mm-hmm, yep, 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 yep. That was, yeah, that is, that is exactly the blueprint or framework. And like you said, it works. It's okay if it works for some people. Um, it's just um, being a woman, you have to realize that you have other options and exactly. you don't necessarily have to follow something that works for another person. There may be something completely different um, for you. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad you spoke on that because I think that is very normal for so many um, women who grow up and, and sort of have this, you know, thoughts of like, go to school, get a, um, go to college, get an internship, get a job, take care of yourself, then get married. <laughs> um, so this this thought around, um, you know, cherish and how you support women's dreams. I, I, I was thinking a little bit more about that and just even thinking about like a dream to like to travel, right, to explore, to learn more about the world, because I think you find in so many times and I myself, this is personal experience and guilty of this as well, that you say, oh, I like to take a trip here. I like to go to this place. But we often let like the hustle and bustle of everyday life um, stop us. So like you'll have a trip planned and then it's like life gets overwhelming and it's like, oh, I can just reschedule that. So um, I think that through your company and what you do to help women, I mean, you really support that dream of like being able to see and explore in the world. And, and holding someone accountable almost to do that. Yes, definitely. I think what's really interesting about what you're saying and the points you're making is that women are honestly more guilty of not taking their paid time off or taking time off period from even their unpaid work mm-hmm. than men are. And we don't realize that we actually own 80% of the buying power, especially here in the United States. So our decisions that we make around how we spend our money has a ton of impact. And so we should get out there and explore the world and really use that intentionality for good and for change. And so through Cherish, I hope to support and empower women to not only take their time off and get out there and explore, but to start making these impactful decisions with their buying power. Um, Like you had said, you know, sometimes people have this dream to go to, let's say, Iceland, but they never really see it through. And um, sometimes with women, especially, there's some safety concerns in that Mm -hmm. as well. And so I'm hoping through Cherish that all of those barriers are broken down in order to invite women of all walks of life, all ages, no matter what your background is, to show up authentically, to show up as yourself, and to travel the world together in a safe sustainable and ethical way Mm -hmm. um, that also, you know, hugely big benefit here is that in these small groups that Cherish creates, it invites that authenticity for yourself. And then you create these really powerful connections Mm -hmm. in community with other women. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a stereotype still that when 
you bring a group of women together, it's going to be drama and catty and all these things. Mm -hmm. And that's just not my experience. Women Mm -hmm. of all ages and different backgrounds, when they come together outside of their comfort zone, Mm -hmm. they create this beautiful environment where they all get along and they lift each other up and there's no judgment there. And that's the goal I'm trying to make true through Cherish to support the dreams of women to travel more and also the dreams of women in the places we're going to through Mm -hmm. supporting their businesses and their careers. Yeah, I love I love all everything that you just said is so um, powerful because for one, two, I was thinking about, like you said, bringing women together in community because I know like it's, it's hard for people to make um, new connections. Um, I know we've got people, I think that people think because, oh, we've got um, all these different apps and all these ways where people can connect. It's a lot harder for people to like make genuine connections through some of the, the digital ways, right? But if you bring women with a shared passion, right? You've got a shared passion for learn for learning, exploring, traveling, but also a shared passion behind helping other women, right? Like you said, being able to support other women in other places um, and help to grow and help them grow a dream. So I think like this, that's a really cool way because you can form these connections. You can get women who like, who may have never met each other before they're meeting on your trips. And then they're also like maybe establishing connections that will last. And maybe, you know, I'm pretty sure you have people who travel together again after they've met on your um, trips. Yeah, we actually have. It's kind of a funny story about that. We just went to Costa Rica in March and we were a group of 11 women of, again, all different backgrounds, all different ages. We had our youngest traveler, I think, was myself at 29 years old and our oldest. And I'm doing air quotes because who who defines old at this point? But right. she was 50 um, and you know, we had people who didn't know us approach us and be like, how do you guys know each other? You guys all seem like best friends. And we had all just met less than a week ago. And by the end of the week, four of them had decided to sign up for a trip next year together so that they could all travel again. So these friendships, these connections are definitely powerful and supportive of with all different types of women. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's worth continuing they actually like you said want to travel together again Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it um what does it mean um to you personally to be able to prioritize right having been able to prioritize travel um in your life oh gosh it means everything to me I think personally travel is incredibly transformational, that when you can participate in more travel and see things that are maybe a little bit different than what you're used to seeing at home, it just creates this beautiful ripple effect of compassion and understanding for people who may not be like you. And so for me to prioritize that in my life, it gives me a opportunity to not only engage in something that I love, but continue to learn and grow and just be inspired by others and the world around me and things that are not what I get to see at home all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And And for me, that's just everything. So I used to travel um, in my corporate life, probably only one to two international trips a year. Mm -hmm. And this year, I think I have seven or eight international trips this year. Mm -hmm. So it's a significant difference in my life to prioritize travel and to make it integrated in a way that Uh, really supports my dreams and just the ability to explore extensively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, Also, uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, just really looking at traveling with the ethical lens and also um, in a sustainable way. Um, Why is that really important for you and your company as well? Yeah, so 
I think I mentioned it just briefly before, but I truly believe that the footprints we leave behind Mm -hmm. matter. And I don't mean that. I think a lot of people think about that in an environmentally ethical way. So they think Mm -hmm. about recycling or using reusable water bottles or straws or those types of things. And that's Mm -hmm. a great place to start. But I think it goes further than that. It's about... um, the biggest way for me to be a sustainable and ethical traveler is to behave as if I'm the guest in someone else's home when I visit a different country. So, and in doing that, you know, you're being respectful, you're following their cultural um, expectations. And then similarly, you know, you get to learn about that experience. So Mm -hmm. to answer your question, I think, it's really important for me and for my company because the the world needs it. We need people who care about where their money is going, how they're treating other people, um, how they're being invited as a tourist into someone's home country, mm-hmm. and just all of those different aspects. Um, I think the only thing that I would like to add as well is if people are not currently familiar with um, travel leakage, it's a great thing to look up and learn more about. It's a super robust topic, but just to give a little intro on what that is, um, travel leakage is the money that leaks out of a Uh, local community from the travelers who visit there. So if you're going to, for example, uh, let's say Mexico, it's the money that goes to support the economies outside of Mexico instead of the people in the local community within Mexico. So I want to, through Cherish, to the best of my ability, support local economies, specifically women in business. So I'm trying to be better through our own travels to have travel leakage be less Mm -hmm. um, so that you can um, really see the economic impact of supporting locally. Mm -hmm. I would love that, Megan. I mean, I I think it's, um, it's very commendable what you do. Um, and you. how you are going about it, because I mean, you could just say, you know, I'm putting together these, you know, excursion trips <laughs> for women to go on. But I think like the care and the um, intention that is behind like everything that you do is really awesome. And I think like anybody listening or watching, you should definitely take a trip with Megan and Cherish. And um, it's just great to know, like, even when you're supporting a business that cares, right? Like for me, that's one of the most important things is like, if I'm spending my money with someone that I want to spend my money with someone who is intentional, someone who is caring, someone who's not going to take advantage of other people, you know, and I think like that really matters. Yes. And there's many ways that you can do that outside of traveling too. There's Mm -hmm. ways that you can be so intentional now with your, with Mm -hmm. how you spend your money and who it goes to. Um, Google even now has uh, stickers that tell you if the business is woman owned, tells Mm -hmm. you if it's LGBTQ plus friendly, all of the things. So you have the power to make those decisions right at your fingertips. Exactly. For sure. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Um, well, I, first of all, just want to, you know, uh, commend you. Um, you are, um, a young woman, um, and you've done so well at, for yourself. You just, you stepped out, you took a chance. Um, whereas, I mean, you could have stayed in your corporate job and you could have, you know, kept planning events that way, but you followed a dream and, at Glow Up Girl, you know, we really support that Glow Up Girl and people yeah. following their dreams and their purposes and their passions. And so I just really want to commend you for doing that. Thank you so much. And I really take that to heart. It means the world to me. I feel really empowered that I can maybe hopefully inspire other women to do the same. Yeah. Um, it's not too late to start and it's not too early to start. You can just start. Yeah. and try it, you know? Yeah. You just have to start. All right? Exactly. <laughs> That's kind of it. All right. So let's talk about some of the upcoming trips 
you have for the rest of this year? Yeah, I would love to. So I have five trips in total this year. Um, We already hosted one to Costa Rica, but upcoming we have our glamping trip to Utah to see some of the national parks. That's at the end of April and already sold out. So we do sell out our trips. So that's super exciting, but should encourage people to hopefully sign up in advance when possible. Um, After that, we have a trip to Alaska this summer. Uh, That's in June, from June 10th until the 16th. The Alaska trip has only a couple of spots left. Um, I would love to talk to anyone who is thinking about going. It's an incredible trip that we partner with um, a local woman-owned tour agency that has women-owned tour uh, sorry, has women guides that lead all of the trips. It's such an incredible trip. And then later this year, we have a Nordic getaway that starts in Denmark, goes to the Faroe Islands and ends in Iceland. It's an incredibly unique, one-of-a-kind itinerary. Um, I actually have family that lives in Denmark, so it is a incredibly local and immersive experience with recommendations directly from them. Um, And then lastly, this year, we have the Panama trip, which is in October from the 21st until the 28th. And that one is also extremely immersive and inspiring. It's just really incredible. We have personal invitations to meet with some of the indigenous tribes throughout Panama. So it's both a immersive experience and yet you, at the same time, your opportunity to take a beach vacation. It's as close as you can get to having an all-inclusive experience, yet mm-hmm. still being sustainable and um just more intentional with your travel. Uh, That trip is in October and I've already launched the trip. If those dates don't work for you for January, 2024, we're going back to Panama. So lots of fun and upcoming things. And I'm really excited. Um, All of the trips are really special and I just hired two travel guides as well. So the three of us as a team are your memory creators is our title Mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone has the best experience when they decide to take a trip with us. Awesome. I love that. Um, All right. I'm going to ask you one last question. Um, You have hit on this a little bit, but um, if you can, what are some of the biggest life lessons that you think travel can teach us? Yeah, that's a great question. I really think the biggest thing is to be compassionate and understanding of circumstances and people who are not exactly like us. Um, It really teaches us to look at the world around us and find beauty instead of finding some of these things that people can be angry about or think are uh, maybe not as beautiful when it's not like us. Travel teaches you to look at it in a beautiful from a beautiful lens and really just be excited to learn about things that are different. I think the other thing, especially as a woman, is that travel has given me personally um, a lot of confidence in myself. I think that especially solo travel um, has given me the opportunity to learn that I'm capable of anything Mm -hmm. and that I can do it scared. I can get out of my comfort zone and I can really just do it scared. Um, I hope that other women try to do the same and just go ahead and go for it. Awesome. Love that. All right. Tell everyone where they can connect to you or learn more about the trips. Yeah, so I am Go Cherish Tours pretty much everywhere on Instagram and Facebook. And then our website is also gocherishtours.com. They can reach out to me through any of those platforms and I'm more than happy to connect. Awesome, awesome. All right, so two more set um, little segments before I let you go, but this was a very awesome conversation. I mean, I think that it will be so helpful to a lot of, listeners, watchers out there, because I think women want to explore, like you said, I think you saying, you know, to step outside of your comfort zone, you hear a lot of people who want to travel, but they don't want to travel alone because they don't, you know, that they may not have a friend group to travel with. And I think this opportunity here just sets them up for like, 
the best success to be able to explore it while getting to know some new people as well. Definitely. I think solo travel is put on a pedestal, but there's so many different ways to do it. Solo mm -hmm. traveling, you don't have to just be alone the whole time. You can show up alone and be in a community instead. Exactly. And it's just a great place to start, to start fulfilling those travel dreams. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So now we are going to move in to three things with Megan. Yeah, I ask you three questions. I love to say that. And then I go, and question number one is a two-parter. So okay. it's like a it's like a one A and one B. Um, Megan, how do you start and end your day? So I am not a very routinized person. Um, it tends to change for me, uh, but mostly it's just waking up and doing the everyday routine, the brushing teeth, showering, all the rest. But then for me, my meditation is walking my dog. So I go on a long walk with my dog every morning. Um, he's the only thing that keeps me <laughs> routinized. And then I <laughs> end my day, um, usually, honestly, scrolling through some of the Instagram reels to hopefully find some inspiration for my own social media and also maybe learn something new. Sometimes that's how I get some of my travel news as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. What's a, what's a book or a song or a show or something that you're, you're just loving right now? So I actually just finished a book called Lessons in Chemistry. Um, it's right in front of me. So I'm trying to read the name of the art, uh, the author. Her name is Bonnie Garmus. And I apologize if that's not the way that you say that. But um, it was the most amazing book. It took place in the 1950s with a woman who wanted to be a chemist. And of course, in the 1950s, that's almost impossible. So it's just about her roadmap in life and how so many things and twists and turns happened to her. And then I also just started the book called Hood Feminism. Um, I can't remember the name of the author at this moment, but I'm really excited to read it and dive deeper into so many different aspects of feminism. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. And the last question is, what does a day off look like for you? Oh my goodness. When was my last day off? Um, <laughs> um, so starting your own company is definitely a work a little bit every day kind of mm -hmm. deal. Um, but when I do have the opportunity to take a day off, I hope that it is surrounded in some self-care. I'm trying to practice being better about that and practice what I preach and having women take care of themselves. So self-care for me usually is getting my nails done or binge watching a reality TV show, mm -hmm. um, maybe having a glass of wine or three uh, and just <laughs> making some good food. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. All right. So before I let you leave, um, what are three things that you'd like the audience to take away from our conversation today? Yeah. Um, if I had to choose three, I think the first is that women have the power to choose the roadmap for their life, that you don't have to follow what anyone has told you you are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I would say that travel is super important and that whether you're traveling internationally or maybe just closer to home that you should get out there and explore new things and then try to explore it from a different lens so that you can learn about yourself and different communities around you mm -hmm. and yeah and then I think number three for me would be that you can make small decisions throughout your life to be supporting more sustainable and ethical things, whether it's travel or not. Um, there's ways that you can use the money you do have to support locals in your own community as well as around the world. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for those. Yeah. And thank you. And thank you so much for um, coming on the show today. Uh, it, like I said, this has been a wonderful conversation. Uh, I think much needed. And I think that this um, will help so many women just to think differently about um, self-care in the sense of like travel and taking care of yourself, just being able to explore, learn more, connect, 
um, and get to know other women and also help other women in different states, countries, um, wherever that may be to fund the dream that they have as well. Yeah, I thank you so much for having me and letting me have that conversation. And I hope that it just tickles some people's fancies to learn more (laughs) and start, uh, you know, diving into that type of thinking. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the Globe Girl podcast. I'm Kyra. Thanks again to Megan for joining the show today. If you want to learn more about Cherish Tours and the trips that are coming up this year and in 2024, you can check out the links in the show notes. If you'd like to learn more about Globe Girl, you can visit us at globegirl.com. Check out our past podcast episodes. You can be a guest on the show. Grab the social links and so much more. Those links are also in the show notes. Um, Also, be sure you're checking out our career-focused podcast episodes as well. It is where I share my personal career experiences with you all in hopes of helping someone who may be listening and saying, oh, I don't know, am I in the right career? Or I just need, my manager is annoying. (laughs) Or my manager's like, you know, being impossible. Um, I really look to give tips um, and just some advice on some things that I've experienced. And also topics that I have, um, topics I've received by just talking to people out there in the professional world as well. All right, and lastly, if you're listening on a platform where you can leave a review, please do so. I'd love for you to do that. All right, so thank you, thank you, thank you all for taking the time to join me today. Um, I will see you all next week and I'll see you with a career episode next week at that. So until then, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone.